Well, he, he, you know, I just I was watching you do your prayer. You know, you was you were sort of doing the Lord's prayer then. Yep. Um, but then I, I noticed that you added the Holy Spirit into it. Yep. Uh, obviously, in the original Lord's prayer, the you, you're not to really pray to the Holy Spirit. Um, well, but that, the that seems prayer, to have added. Right? In the Lord's prayer, when I ended to name the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, because you'll find early on the practice of the Christians were to invoke the authority of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. So the real question is, can you pray to the Holy Spirit? Uh, yeah, well, you can pray for Holy Spirit. No, um, so you, you notice know, you dropped the, the, the Holy Spirit to say. Daniel, I'm, I'm paying attention to your words. Did you see what you did? Because the joke is you pray for Holy Spirit. You didn't say the Holy Spirit because this is the programming. You dropped the definite article. You didn't say pray for the Holy Spirit. And number two, I didn't say pray for the Holy Spirit. I said pray to the Holy Spirit. Yeah, so can, well, okay, so can you pray to the Holy Spirit? Yes, it's in 2 Corinthians 13, 14. You know what it's a benediction and vocation is? I'll, I'll bring up the verse. You want me to use the Jehovah's Witness Bible? Or do you want me to use any Bible? <laughs> any, like. Okay. Uh, benediction and vocation is this. It's when we read the epistles, they'll begin by invoking, let's say, grace and peace to you from God the Father and Lord Jesus Christ. You're aware of that, right? That This is what Paul says in, you know, when yeah. he begins. So you're aware of that, right? Second of Timothy. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I, I do notice he makes a, a clear distinction as well, though. <laughs> yeah, well, but that's what we believe. Jesus is not the Father, but you keep assuming that the Father alone is Jehovah. We'll get to that. You're begging the okay. question. Jesus can be distinct from God the Father. And yet still be God, just like Eve is distinct from Adam, yet she's Adam. We'll get there. First, let's establish that you're aware that when the epistles are written, they will invoke God upon the readers of the epistle and end it with a what's called a benediction. You're aware of this or do I need to give you examples? No, I am aware of that. Yet. Okay. So then what do you do with 2 Corinthians 13, 14? Okay, here it is. Because this is now praying. To Jesus, God, and the Holy Spirit. Here it is. 2 Corinthians 13, verse 14. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. That's a prayer. You can read in your Jovens Bible. They'll put the H in as a lowercase and drop the article. You're, there, he's invoking yeah. Jesus and God and the Spirit for the recipients of the letter. That the Lord will grant them favor or undeserved kindness as the Jovens Bible renders it. God will fill them with love and the Holy Spirit will cause them to have fellowship or share in communion with the spirit this is a prayer yeah so it's, it's given so jesus came to give us undeserved kindness that was his that's not what i'm asking we're talking about the prayer see we got to stay focused Danny. i know you want to go off tangent this is a prayer what do you do with the fact that the spirit is being prayed to with jesus and god because you don't pray to jesus you pray in jesus name and you definitely don't pray to the holy spirit so you're not like paul but to be off the top of my head i can't no uh the sharing of the holy spirit yeah sharing in that's to, to me to me to me, that's saying we, we are sharing the Holy Like, it, What does that mean to the share comforter, isn't it? the Holy Spirit? What does that mean? The Holy Spirit, I believe it's called the Comforter, isn't it? And yeah, um, we know, you know it's we're, we're given this. Yeah, so Jesus gives us the Comforter to help us in. If we go there, you're going to prove the Holy Spirit is a person, so you're wrong. He's not an active force. I understand what Jesus said. Because if you go to John 16, 12 to 13, he says, He, that Comforter, will not speak on his own initiative. He'll only speak what he hears. How can an active force hear and speak anything? So it's going to cause you problems. Before we get there, stay here. This is a prayer. He's praying to Jesus and God and the Spirit. Why? This is a prayer. This is a benediction. You don't pray to the Spirit, and you don't even pray to Jesus, but Paul did. Why? If you are a true follower of Jesus like Paul was, because you don't follow the habits of Paul. I'll take your word for it at the minute. No, you don't. Know, take I'm my sure word. you would lie, so that's fine. My friend, don't take no, I'll be like, at the minute because... Yeah, only at the minute because, like I say, I, I don't. Yeah. I'll be reading the whole thing. I'll be I'll be here for like. You yeah, know, you need three, to read four it. Minutes. These are called. <laughs> yeah. Just do a search on what's called benedictions. Benedictions is an invocation of blessing upon the recipients. It's like the ironic benediction in number six, twenty-two to twenty-six. And yet here, Paul does something you don't do as a witness. He invoked Jesus and God. And yet the Holy Spirit, you don't invoke Jesus. You pray to the Father in Jesus' name. What do you believe about Jesus? So I believe that Jesus has been given the name. It's, uh, John 17, 11, it mentions that, you know, Jesus has been given the name. And what does that mean? The Father. Uh, so to me, that means, you know, he's been given it for a given set what? period of time. No, that's not because you're misunderstanding names. So you, again, you assume your interpretation when you're wrong. Given the name means that he's been authorized. Name can mean authority. That the Father yeah, has yeah. authorized the Son. But that's not the divine name per se. Because if you read John in context, it says that Jesus is that Jehovah who came into the flesh. That's in John 1, if you read verse 23. So he was not given the name. 
he had the name Jehovah, and he's Jehovah became flesh. So you're assuming too much in the way you're misreading these texts. Do you have your Bible? Can you read John 1.23, who that John the Baptist is, and who is he sent to prepare for? So he said, I am a voice of someone crying out in the wilderness, make the way of Jehovah straight, just as Isaiah the prophet said. Have you read the prophecy in Isaiah whom John the Baptist was sent to prepare? Uh, no. Okay, now go to Isaiah 40, verses 3 to 5, to see... Who exactly John is sent to prepare for? A voice of one calling out in the wilderness, clear up the way of Jehovah, make a straight highway through the desert for our God. Let every valley be raised up and every mountain and hill be made low. The rough ground must become level and the rugged ground a valley plain. As the glory of Jehovah will be revealed and all flesh will see it together. Okay. For the Did mouth you see of Jehovah three? has spoken. Yeah, my, I don't mean to cut you off. I apologize. I just want you to pay attention. You see verse 3, the voice is saying, prepare the way of Jehovah, make a highway for our God. So who's going to show up? Yeah. Jehovah, our God. Yeah, like I said, he's been given the name. But, no, see, you just twisted uh, it. No, it doesn't say that. It says Jehovah, our God is coming. So do you believe Jehovah, Israel's God, was given the name Jehovah? By whom? Yeah, so he, he is the image of, of God. So you he, twisted it again. Where does the verse say? The one coming is the image of God. It says Jehovah, our God. I mean, how many more times do I have to ask that? Where do you see image of God is coming? One who's given the name. It says, no, prepare the way for Jehovah. Make a highway for our God. Jehovah, our God is coming. What do you not see? But, no, but Jesus is God in the flesh. We know that. Well, I don't like know. Like I say, my, 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 my beef is not with the Jehovah Jesus dynamic. That, that's not my, that's not my, um, problem really my problem is with the holy spirit specifically okay, we'll get to the holy spirit I think but I, is... I wanna, so you admit jesus is not simply given the name because that's a misreading john 17 11 he is that jehovah god who came in the flesh so we can get beyond that and we go to the holy spirit friend it says what it says no, yeah okay yeah, yeah 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 okay well it does say he's been given the name in which you've given me the name means you've given me the authority your authority because you've authorized me to do what i'm doing why are you twisting what the word name means the name that it's given him if you look at the word anoma name can refer to authority the authority you have given me because the son does not act independently from the father. The father authorizes the son. You've misread John 17, 11 yeah. to mean something it doesn't mean. He's always been Jehovah. Because Isaiah 40 says that Jesus is Jehovah, our God, who's coming. And Israel's God is Jehovah. And no one gave him that name. He's always had that name. But if you want to move on to the Holy Spirit, I can. So if the Holy Spirit was, you know, we needed this to be saved, we had to say, yes, the Holy Spirit is a person. Why would it not say that in John 17? Break it. Why should it? Yeah, you need to know. Why does it have to? You be need to know Jesus. Why does it have? You need to, to know Jesus. 17. Why can't it be in Mark 3, 28 to 30 to show you? If you blaspheme the Holy Spirit, you'll never be forgiven. How do you commit the unforgivable sin against a force? See, I'm going to butcher you now. Go to Mark 3, 28 to 30. Why does it have to be in John 17? Okay. Why can't it be in Mark 3, 28 to 30? Uh, truly, I say to you that all things will be forgiven the sons of men, no matter what sins they commit and what blasphemies they speak. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit has no forgiveness forever, but is guilty of everlasting sin. Okay, now go to the parallel of Matthew 12, 31, 32, because I'm going to turn it against you now. For this reason, I say to you, every sort of sin and blasphemy will be forgiven men, but the blasphemy against the Spirit, it will not be forgiven. No, I, I see what you're saying. I, no, I don't you're see, again, I don't see how I'm being argumentative. How can you commit the unforgivable sin against something that's not God? The only sin that can ever be forgiven is against God, your creator. So you don't get it because you're too busy trying to argue. How do you commit the unforgivable sin against something that's not God? The only unforgivable sin can be committed against God. What do you not see and what's reading in front of your eyes? So now let me play your game. Why didn't Jesus say the unforgivable sin is to commit against the only true God who's the Father? See, this is the game you're playing with me. You're taking one verse out of context, but not trying to read the Bible as a whole. That's not how you do biblical exegesis. If you believe the Bible is consistent, you interpret Scripture in light of Scripture. Here you have a verse that says, blaspheming the Holy Spirit is the unforgivable sin. But according to you, the Holy Spirit is not Jehovah. So how can you commit the unforgivable sin against something that's not Jehovah? If it's God's act of force, then you would not, you would how not do blaspheme. How you it, offend it? and slander an act of force? Because if you read the context, which you didn't, blasphemy slander occur, occurs against persons. 